Mm. Oh, she's tart. If you're not familiar with my channel, hey, hey there, hi there, ho there, neighbor. My name is Kay the Great Beauty, and uh, you should click that subscribe button. Can I talk today? Uh, please hit that subscribe button and that like button, and let's get going. Ooh, that is a refreshing treat. Okay, I got a little creative. I'm trying something new. This is, of course, Hendrix Gin with something I've never heard of. Spice soda, pink peppercorn with lemon. Look at this, look at this can. I'm gonna put just a little bit more in. That is a tasty ass treat. Run, do not walk on this as a mixer. This video has been a long time coming. I have never done a foundation video. This is my top five foundations and one huge fail and it's a shocker. So that'll be at the end of the video. Stay tuned for that. Also side note, I'm sorry if you can hear my AC a humming in the background. I have an AC unit over here to my left, but the time has come, guys. Okay, it is basically summertime here in New York City. The humidity is like 80 something percent. I'm sweating profusely, and I don't think you want to see that. So instead, you might have to hear a little like ambient white noise over here. Just take a little sip of my cocktail. Yeah. I just have to say, I feel like this last year was a pretty amazing year for incredible foundations. I personally discovered so many flawless foundations that take little to no effort to blend in. And it, it looks like an angel came down from the heavens above and just, I was gonna say sat on my face. That's not where I was going. That's not what I was trying to do with this. What I'm trying to say is these foundations cannot do anything wrong in my opinion. I can't wait to take you through them. And I also did do something I, I don't normally do. I took a little more time and actually filmed some B-roll of me applying every single foundation so you can see what it looks like on my skin. I did apply them like one on one side of the face and another on the other side of my face so I could get through all of them. And I've got quite a range of things here. I've got all kinds of coverage. I've got a high-end foundation. I've got a drugstore foundation. I think I got you covered, especially if you're a person who wants a skin-like gorgeous natural finish to your foundation. Everything I talk about today, all the foundations, including everything I have on my face is going to be linked down below as always just a reminder that those are affiliate links and if you do shop through any of my links that does give me a little bit of a commission and i thank you in advance now i didn't really put these in order like this is my number one my number two because i couldn't i couldn't quite decide they're all so next level in my opinion but i am going to break down the prices for you um and like i said hopefully you can get something out of seeing what they look like on my skin as I apply them. Okay, so this kind of is like my number one though. I said I didn't really rank them, and that's kind of true, but like, this is low key my number one. This is uh, the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. This, found, I, I'm like almost getting through this, which is wild because I haven't had it that long, but it really is my number one go-to foundation right now. This is long wearing, it is medium coverage, and it is a natural finish. What I will say about every single foundation you see here today, and hopefully you can see this in my demos, uh, all of them can be sheared out. So even if they're like a medium to full coverage, they still sheer out gorgeously, which is like my number one thing. This foundation does claim to be a medium coverage, and I do think it's definitely buildable to that, but it also shears out to a really beautiful, light coverage, dewy finish. This has really nice skincare elements to it. It has hyaluronic acid, rose complex for brighter, smoother looking skin, and Bix Active, which visibly reduces shine and blurs the look of pores. This retails for $44. I just love everything about this. I love the packaging. This is easy to travel with. This is what I took uh, when I had a recent performance gig in Florida. And this is, yeah, this is the only foundation I had. And it did me right the entire time. I think I told this story before, but I'm gonna tell it again. I had like l basically little to no time to get ready for this performance because our um, sound check went on forever. It was frantic. I was a little worried. I had maybe like 25 minutes to do everything. Like my makeup, put on the Fenty body sauce, just, put my dress on, it was it was madness, but this killed it. Like literally with a beauty blender, like 
just all over my face as quick as I could. It looked damn flawless. I'm actually gonna put a screenshot up on the screen of a selfie I took right before I went on stage. There's no filter on it. It's literally just, you know, the lighting in the dressing room. So you can see just how beautifully it photographs. I, I honestly felt like a queen that night, okay? So this foundation, in my opinion, can do no wrong. I would choose this over my Light Wonder, and I know that's wild. It's really splitting hairs. I love the Light Wonder foundation, but this, I don't know, this just feels so creamy and lotion-y. I'm just really digging on it. Mm, she's frosty. The next foundation I'm gonna talk about is my beloved Chantecaille Future Skin Foundation. Okay, this foundation really is so gorgeous and hydrating. It does feel very similar to the Charlotte Tilbury. So that's why I put the Charlotte Tilbury on one side of my face and the Chantecaille on the other side so that you can see the difference. The difference to me is that the Chantecaille is a little, not by much, we're talking about splitting hairs here, but the Chantecaille is just a little less dewy to me uh, or on me rather than the Charlotte Tilbury. This is an oil-free foundation. It is lightweight. It is 60% water, which is pretty unique. And it is an adjustable coverage medium to full. Now this is what it looks like. It does come in a jar. I know some people don't love that. And I normally would think I wouldn't love that, but I kind of love it. I mean, it's not the easiest to travel with and I would definitely prefer this, but I like that I can just dip a clean finger in here and just like dot it all over my face in like a second. It's just very easy and convenient to me. And I don't feel like it's actually that messy. This also has skincare elements to it. It has aloe, chamomile, arnica, uh, Arnica is to calm irritation and soothe your skin, which I really appreciate because sometimes, you know, my skin is very like, um, I don't know that I have the most sensitive skin, but it definitely gets a little irritated and a little like pinky red sometimes. So I really like the fact that uh, some of these foundations have some skincare elements to them, some calming elements. This is the most expensive foundation on this list, okay? And actually I forgotten how expensive it was. Uh, this was sent to me by Chantecaille. I did not pay for this myself, but this is $82. That is a spacious foundation. She's not making any apologies, but she's expensive. So just know that. But I have to tell you that even though this is a very expensive foundation, if you have the cast of flash, I think it's absolutely stunning. And like I said, I think it is like a little bit less dewy, a little bit more of a true natural finish to me than the Charlotte Tilbury, if that gives you sort of a frame of reference. But like, just look at it in the jar. It just gave me chills looking at it in the jar. I'm angry with you, okay? I'm filled with rage. So I lied, okay? This is actually six foundations, but if I would have put top six foundations as the title and the thumbnail, that just doesn't sound as good, okay? But you're getting six foundations for the price of one. You're welcome. Next, moving on to a super cult favorite foundation. I mean, I've heard so many people talk about this and I very rarely heard anyone speak badly of it. This is the Dior Air Flash Spray Foundation Airbrushed Radiance. This was sent to me by a subscriber. Thank you so much, Sherry Ford. I will never look back. I will always repurchase this. It's kind of fallen to the wayside for me because, you know, obviously whatever. I just have new makeup and I've been focusing on that, but I haven't forgotten about it and I never will because it is just so unique, especially for a found, well, for, for several reasons. One, it's a, a full coverage foundation or it can be built up to be full coverage, but it doesn't apply like a full coverage foundation. My God, it goes on like just Mm, like satin. It's like I'm putting a fresh layer of s polished skin on my skin. I, I don't know how else to say it. It's wild. So this is lightweight, full coverage, radiant finish. It is enriched with light diffusing pigments to give an airbrushed effect. And this is Spency as well. This is $62. I know a lot of people are put off by the fact that it's a spray. And yes, you can see right here, it's a little bit of a mess, but honestly, I just don't care. I don't care because it's so damn good. 
it doesn't even bother me. My favorite way to apply this is to basically spray it into my hand and then I will dab it, uh, dab into it with a brush or a sponge, or I will spray it into my hand and then immediately just like dot it on my face and go from there. I actually have a friend who's getting married soon and she's trying to find a perfect foundation and she mentioned this and I was like, yes. It's, this is a great wedding foundation. I mean, it's a great anything foundation really, but I just love this because it is long wearing. It can be built up, but it also just looks like your skin. It looks so gorgeous and natural. If you are going to get this, I'm not saying you have to get the brush. Obviously in my B-roll, I did not use a brush. I used my beloved beauty blender, but I will tell you, I do have the Dior brush that you can buy separately and it's phenomenal. So if you're a person who loves a brush, it's a great brush if you wanna spend the money. Okay, so now we're getting to the drugstore foundation. This foundation has blown me away, blown me away to smithereens. This is the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear Foundation. It is a medium to full coverage. It is a lightweight natural finish, 24 hour wear, which is wild. I actually have had a couple subscribers attest to wearing it for 24 hours and it's still looking phenomenal. The claims on this are that it resists transfer, sweat, and is breathable. It is an SPF 25 and this retails for $15.99. This is absolutely the most medium to full coverage foundation I own and I have two shades just because I think they were sold out of the shade that probably would have been perfect for me. So I just mix these two together and it's actually perfection. This also just shears out beautifully. I cannot tell you how few full coverage foundations I've tried that I actually like. And I'm gonna be bold and say that this is maybe my most favorite drugstore product I've ever used because we all know drugstore foundations, not always the best. You know, you're rolling the dice, you don't you don't know what you're gonna get necessarily, but I'm telling you right now, you're gonna get something good with this. The fail I'm actually gonna talk about is a full coverage foundation that's incredibly high end and didn't work for me and this does, so just saying. Okay, so the next foundation we're moving on to is this baby right here, and you know what? She fell to the wayside. She really did, but I haven't forgotten about her. I just got overwhelmed. When I put this on today, I was re-reminded, not a word, but I'm using it, of how phenomenal it is. So this is the only technical like tinted moisturizer in this group. Although I would argue that a couple of foundations actually apply very much like a tinted moisturizer, which I'm a fan of. But this is an actual tinted moisturizer and it is broad spectrum SPF 30. Obviously you're, you don't wanna get your SPF just from your foundation. You wanna wear SPF underneath, but this is like, added protection on top. Okay, so they say this is a light to medium coverage and a natural finish. I have never tried to build this up to medium coverage because I don't personally wanna do that, but I will say I do feel like it's a very light, dewy, gorgeous finish. Like it is Dewey McDuerson's Deweyville. I love it. Like it's after my own heart and actually I kept it on. So this side of my face, the side of my face that I applied it to, it's still there. Oh, and I also wanna mention the primer I use. This is the primer I used underneath every single foundation that I applied for you. This is a obviously a sample of the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. I know Michelle Wong dies for this. I am obsessed and I'm absolutely getting the full size. This is phenomenal and it literally just calmed my skin every time I would wipe the foundation off and put this on lifesaver. <laughs> I'm sold. So anyway, back to the Tower 28. So this is a light to medium coverage. It is a natural finish, although I would argue that is mostly a light coverage and a dewy finish. But it, like you can see, this is what it looks like with powder. This is highlighter right here. So it's not so dewy that it's not going to like set down and you know, look natural. Another really special thing about this that I very rarely see is this has been accepted by the National Eczema Association. So this is perfect for people with skin conditions like that, with super sensitive skin, and it has great uh, skincare elements. So prickly pear extract, which repairs and protects from blue light pollution, and white sage extract, which reduces appearance of irritation and neutralizes free radicals from the sun. This retails for $30. I think that is a great 
price for a quality foundation. I just think they really got this right. They got it right in every regard with the packaging, with the price, the quality, the skincare elements. It is just like a dewy, uh, dewy skin lover's dream. It's so, so gorgeous to me. And then moving on to the foundation that I have on the other side of my face, which yes, I did keep the two different foundations on my face. So you're seeing Tower 28, Kosas over here. This is the Kosas Revealer Foundation and wow, I am just in love. I loved their concealer and I was like, wow, they really killed it with this complexion line because I love the foundation just as much. So this is skin improving. It is medium coverage. It is a natural finish with an SPF of 25. This has hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, peptides, squalane, vitamin B5, arnica, and caffeine. So this arguably has, from what I can see, from the information I have, this seems to have the most skincare in it. I think this is just stunning. You can kind of see the comparison on both sides of my face between the Tower 28 and the Kosas. Again, I do feel like it's very much splitting hairs, but I will tell you that the Kosas by a hair is definitely less dewy than the Tower 28. There's a little bit more coverage to it. I do feel like it is more of a medium coverage, but it shears out gorgeously. A lot of people have talked about it leaning really yellow. Um, which I guess is the case, but I didn't really notice because my shade is 120, which is very light cool. And it's not like the coolest, lightest of the cool light foundations I've had, but I actually kind of like that because I, as a cool pink skinned person, I tend to gravitate more toward a neutral undertone just because I don't need something to like double down on my coolness. I kind of want to balance it out. And I really do feel like this does that really well. Okay, so moving on to the fail, and this actually came as a huge surprise to me as well. And I just want to do a little bit of a disclaimer because I have to say that this brand and this person they're literally sent from the heavens above. I'm obsessed with her, I'm obsessed with her brand, and I love most of the products in her brand. This is the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Foundation. So many people love this foundation. I mean, my God, I could not hear more positive feedback about it, really. And, you know, I just have to preface this by saying, and I'm not trying to sound like an asshole here, but like, there's not a lot of foundations that I feel like I can't make work for myself. You know, I can use a different primer, a different application technique, or a little less, or a little, whatever it is. I feel like I can generally make it look good. I could not work with this foundation. And I mean to tell you, I tried it so many times. I tried it all the ways. I don't know what the deal is. It just did not take to my skin. Like the other day I tried to actually uh, use a technique that she had talked about in a video. And I was like, oh, this is gonna be perfect. This is, this is what I've been looking for. So I actually mixed some uh, moisturizer into a pump of the foundation and tried to use it as a tinted moisturizer. And I got like halfway through filming and I just, I just deleted it because I just felt like my skin did not look good. It was patchy. It wasn't like, you know, when foundation doesn't like take to your skin, it like almost looks like it's laying on top of your skin. It was kind of like, I don't know. It was like the last dry. I was like, you know what? I know so many people love this. It is just not my deal. It is not working with my skin. It is not playing well with it. If there's a foundation that I feel like I have to work that hard to make look good, when I have all these foundations where I basically have to do next to no work at all, there's no reason for me to keep that around because I'm just not gonna reach for it. So I did declutter that, but I have to tell you that I am wearing her Pink Moon Elevated Glow today. And I love it. Again, I want to reiterate how much I love most of what Lisa Eldridge put out. It just did not work for me. Okay, guys, so that is my top five, six foundations video. And one fail. Thank you so much for joining me. Guys, it's scary out there, okay? Like, I don't know what the fuck is going on, but everything is terrible. Everything's terrible. You guys are the best. Please stay safe out there. And cheers till next time. Bye. Mm.